Welcome to Concepts of the Visual System in 5 Minutes or Less, the Retinal Layers and Photo Transduction. This tutorial is made possible in part by materials created by the Virtual Labs Project, SimPhysio Labs. Due to copyright laws, this material is for educational use only. The retina is a sheet of cells on the back of the eye that contains the cells necessary to convert light into a neural signal. There are three main layers of the retina, the photoreceptor layer, the bipolar cell layer, and the retinal ganglion cell layer. Light is absorbed first by the photoreceptors, the backmost layer, and then signals are sent to the brain in the reverse direction. Watch as this animation shows the direction light travels, followed by the direction of the neural signal. Taking a closer look at the layers in the retina, we can see the following. Information about light striking the retina is transferred from the photoreceptors to the bipolar cells and then to the ganglion cells. Photoreceptors tell us about the intensity of light using graded potentials. Bipolar cells connect the photoreceptors and the ganglion cells. The ganglion cells receive input from bipolar cells and fire action potentials, which are sent to the brain via the optic nerve. There are two other types of cells that help mediate this signal, horizontal cells and amacrine cells. Horizontal cells influence communication at the photoreceptor bipolar cell synapses. Amacrine cells influence communication at the bipolar cell ganglion cell synapses. There are two types of photoreceptors, rods and cones. The outer segment of the photoreceptors absorb light. The inner segment contains the nucleus and the synaptic terminal connects with bipolar and horizontal cells in order to transmit information about the incoming light. There are several key differences between rods and cones as we will see in just a moment. First, let's take a look at the distribution of rods and cones in the retina. The fovea is the central point of focus and is made up mostly of cones. This is the red line. As we travel away from the fovea in either direction, the number of cones decreases dramatically and the number of rods increases. You can also see that the ratio of photoreceptors to ganglion cells is 1 to 1 in the fovea, but increases as we travel away from the fovea. For this reason, cones provide more detailed information about a stimulus than rods do. The cones are also important for conveying color information about a stimulus. There are three types of cones. Each one responds best to light of a particular wavelength, either red, green, or blue. Lastly, let's take a look at how light is translated by a photoreceptor into a graded potential. In the dark, an outward movement of potassium tends to hyperpolarize the cell towards its resting potential. However, there is also a slight influx of sodium that counteracts this effect, tending to depolarize the cell. The result is a slightly depolarized potential. In this case, the slightly depolarized photoreceptor releases glutamate. In the light, a process within the receptor begins to close the sodium channels. This causes hyperpolarization of the photoreceptor. As a result, glutamate release is reduced. The response of the bipolar cell depends on the specific type of glutamate receptor present in that bipolar cell. We will take a look at this in an upcoming video.